Thales of Miletus, c. 624-623 circa 548-545 BC, was a Greek mathematician, astronomer and pre-Socratic philosopher from Miletus in Ionia, Asia Minor. He was one of the seven sages of Greece. Many, most notably Aristotle, regarded him as the first philosopher in the Greek tradition, and he is otherwise historically recognized as the first individual known to have entertained and engaged in scientific philosophy. He is often referred to as the father of science. Thales is recognized for breaking from the use of mythology to explain the world and the universe, and instead explaining natural objects and phenomena by naturalistic theories and hypotheses, in a precursor to modern science. Almost all the other pre-Socratic philosophers followed him in explaining nature as deriving from a unity of everything based on the existence of a single ultimate substance, instead of using mythological explanations. Aristotle regarded him as the founder of the Ionian school and reported Thales' hypothesis that the originating principle of nature and the nature of matter was a single material substance, water. In mathematics, Thales used geometry to calculate the heights of pyramids and the distance of ships from the shore. He is the first known individual to use deductive reasoning applied to geometry, by deriving four corollaries to Thales' theorem. He is the first known individual to whom a mathematical discovery has been attributed. The dates of Thales' life are not exactly known, but are roughly established by a few datable events mentioned in the sources. According to Herodotus, Thales predicted the solar eclipse of May 28, 585 BC. Diogenes Laertius quotes the chronicle of Apollodorus of Athens as saying that Thales died at the age of 78 during the 58th Olympiad, 548-545 BC, and attributes his death to heat stroke while watching the games. Thales was probably born in the city of Miletus around the mid-620s BC. The ancient writer Apollodorus of Athens writing during the 2nd century BC, thought Thales was born about the year 625 BC. Herodotus writing in the 5th century BC, described Thales as a Phoenician by remote descent. However, the probability is that he was as Greek as most Milesians since his ancestors were Cadmians from Boeotia and not Semites. Tim Whitmarsh wrote that Thales regarded water as the primal matter, and because Thal is the Phoenician word for moisture, his name may have derived from this circumstance. However, this seems to be a minority view, since most dictionaries assert that his name comes from the Greek word Thalo plus S in which case means one who thrives. According to the later historian Diogenes Laertius, in his 3rd century AD Lives of the Philosophers, references Herodotus, Derish, and Democritus, who all agree that Thales was the son of Examias and Cleobelina, and belonged to the Thelidae who are Phoenicians and amongst the noblest descendants of Cadmus and Agner. Their names are Carion and Greek, respectively. Friedrich Nietzsche stresses the fact that his ancestors were only Phoenician in the sense that they could trace back their fictitious origins to the seafaring people of the mythological hero Cadmus. Therefore, his family migrated from Thebes, in central Greece, to Ionia in Asia Minor. Diogenes then states that most writers, however, represent him as a native of Miletus and of a distinguished family. His supposed mother, Cleobelina, has also been described as his companion instead of his mother. Nevertheless, the scholarly consensus is that, even though he is said by some ancient authors to have been of Phoenician extraction, he was most likely a native Milesian of noble birth and that he was certainly a Greek. Diogenes continues, by delivering more conflicting reports, one that Thales married and either fathered a son, Sibisthus or Sibisthon, or adopted his nephew of the same name, the second that he never married, telling his mother as a young man that it was too early to marry, and as an older man that it was too late. Plutarch had earlier told this version. Solon visited Thales and asked him why he remained single. Thales answered that he did not like the idea of having to worry about children. Nevertheless, several years later, anxious for family, he adopted his nephew Sibisthus. It is assumed that Thales, at one point in his life, visited Egypt, where he learned about geometry. It is not impossible that Thales visited Egypt, since Miletus had a permanent colony there, namely Nocratus, However visits to Egypt were a commonplace attribution to various philosophers by later writers, especially when these writers tried to explain mathematical knowledge. Thales may have known about Egypt from accounts of others, without actually visiting it. Diogenes Laertius wrote that Thales identifies Miletus as Athenian colony. Thales, who died around 30 years before the time of Pythagoras and 300 years before Euclid, Eudoxus of Nidus, and Eudemus of Rhodes, is often hailed as the first Greek mathematician. While some historians, such as Colin R. Fletcher, 
point out that there could have been a predecessor to Thales who would have been named in Eudemus' lost book history a geometry, it is admitted that without the work the question becomes mere speculation. Fletcher holds that as there is no viable predecessor to the title of first Greek mathematician, the only question is whether Thales qualifies as a practitioner in that field. He holds that Thales had at his command the techniques of observation, experimentation, superposition and deduction. He has proved himself mathematician. Aristotle wrote in Metaphysics, Thales, the founder of this school of philosophy, says the permanent entity is water, which is why he also propounded that the earth floats on water. Presumably he derived this assumption from seeing that the nutriment of everything is moist, and that heat itself is generated from moisture and depends upon it for its existence, and that from which a thing is generated is always its first principle. He derived his assumption from this, and also from the fact that the seeds of everything have a moist nature whereas water is the first principle of the nature of moist things. 